the Netflix thing, you know, we're three months away from it or whatever. What do you do day one, Netflix? Like, what is your thing to draw? Because this is your, oh, you have one shot to do your debut Netflix show. Do you do yeah. one of those old school Raws where you bring back all the old people and re- all of a sudden Ric Flair's on and Hogan's on and Undertaker's on and Austin comes back? Or do you put like a giant pay-per-view match as the thing to draw the viewership? I, I would treat it. I I would, of course, do the, the, uh, the legends, right? You're going to bring those guys in. Uh, I would bring Steve Austin in. The Rock will be on there. Uh, and I would, I would definitely swap a title. I would definitely do a major title change. The and you also have Saturday night's main event just two weeks before that. So you, you, you have. Um, I don't think they have a December PLE, do they? Because I think they go. Wasn't um, it TLC before? I don't know. Unless they pulled. Yeah, it. but I don't think they did that last year. Maybe I'm wrong, but you have. Survivor Series is kind of the last thing, and then maybe in December, your PLE is Saturday night's main event. So that's where you peak the TV for a Saturday night's main event. And then two weeks later, or maybe it's three weeks later, depending on that first Monday in January, then you got the Netflix show. So you know they're they're gonna they're gonna be having to yeah. save some big stuff for those two shows. I would do only... it, man. I would I would. I would do it. I would pull maybe uh, not obviously the Cody's not dropping it, but I mean, you could do a Gunther title swap. You could do an IC title swap. You could have a big hot angle happen. You know, someone something. I, I, I think they need to treat this as something really large. And I'll tell you why there is a, there is still a tremendous amount of disenfranchised wrestling fans that are my age and your age that you have a unique opportunity to get them back. You know, AEW filled that void for a couple of years. Uh, That Bullet Club boom kind of brought some people back. And then, you know, CM Punk brought people back. You need to do something here. And I think The Rock being a part of that is great. I think Steve Austin wrestling on WrestleMania a couple of years ago was fantastic for that. But you need to do something that's going to make people turn this on. Most people are not channel surfing anymore. It's almost impossible to do so. So you're you're stuck on one thing. If you're in the Netflix ecosphere and you see this live WWE, you're going to turn it on and you're going to want those people to stay. You could do a ton. I, I would really cater to gaining those people back. All Especially right, WrestleMania if, season. What if first Raw of the year, main event, John Cena against CM Punk? Fantastic. 10 out of 10. I'll they could do it. stuff like that. They could definitely yeah. do stuff like that. And nobody they, has they, to look bad. Nobody has to look bad at all. Seth Rollins could come in or someone interrupts. And then the following week, for the first time in over a decade, John Cena and CM Punk are teaming up to yeah. face whoever. <laughs> so now you backed it up, you know? Now you got a second guy, second week out of this. There's a lot. I mean, I, I love that stuff. Uh, when, you, when you're talking about, like, booking and stuff like that, I don't like to book, but I like to... I really like the marketing aspect. Of yeah, there there is a marketing aspect of booking. Nobody talks about that, though. Nobody looks yeah. at it that way. You know, when WWE had it, I mean, as close to perfect as you could imagine for a couple of years, because what would they do every single week or, or every cup every two weeks, right? The main event, it's a big main event. It's Austin and whoever, or Rock and whoever. And something is happening, and the music hits, and here comes Triple H, and here comes Mick Foley, and oh my God, what's going to happen next week? Oh, and then you go black. Yeah. Which is fantastic. And you don't really see that often. And AEW has attempted it. WWE barely does that now. Barely. You don't end in chaos. I think they need to end the show in chaos uh, and, and continue that. And, and if you kind of condition people like, oh man, that last hour, the last 20 minutes of this show, I need to know what's happening for next week. People will tune in. But again, that's the marketing aspect of this, that people get too stuck in the nuance of ending the show happy or ending the show this way, or, you know, having the match conclude on the right time. You know, think, give me the last, okay, here's one, right? You and I, big AEW fans. 
give me the last sign off that company did that you stopped and he said, holy shit, I got to watch next week. How are they? How are they doing this? Yeah. I can't tell you one. Are you saying a show that didn't end in uh, the Dark Order punching the mat? That December, that was the December <laughs> show. Uh, and that is, and do you know what's scary? I know exactly which show that was. I want to say, was it December 8th or December 5th? It was like, remember. it was in December. How the hell do I remember that it's in December? Because it was so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? That's the last one I remember because I was like, God damn it. How are they explaining this next week? 